Welcome back to the Ravy World Cup 2023 Roads. And after talking with some players, uh, with also like Becca Gorgazi today, I have another Lelos player. His name is Lasha Jayani. He's George's lock. And we're going to talk about how his team is doing in the Ravy World Cup when they're heading for the second game of the campaign. So, Lasha, after playing against Australia, we know that it didn't end like you wanted. But I think, as Levan, Levan Masmashvili told, you learned lessons and now are more ready for the next game. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Uh, personally, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, in the game against Australia, it was tough, obviously, there at tier one side. A uh, very good team as well. But I think we um, left a few chances out there, which if we had used, maybe that could have turned the game in our favor. There was one or two specifically that I'm thinking about that could have really sort of turned the game in our favor. But that's in the past now. We've spoken about Australia. We've analyzed what we've done correctly, what we've done wrong, uh, what these chances were, and now how we can use them in the next game. So, yeah, we're just going from game to game. And obviously now it's Portugal, uh, who is also a quite a good team. Uh, we've played them many times before in the European Championship. And they've had their first game now uh, against Wales, even though the score was pretty large. If anyone who watched the game saw that the Portuguese played really well uh, with a lot of passion. Um, and they have, uh, so they have some really good strengths in their rugby uh, in terms of playing with speed. Uh, and I think it'll be a very good um, challenge and match against Portugal. Uh, you told us that uh, some things didn't go as you wanted against Australia. Um, one of the things that people noticed was the scrum was not hitting the right notes in the first half, but in the second, you dominated complete, completely Australia. Um, so what can we expect from the, uh, from the set piece from this point onwards until the final game of the pool stage uh yes obviously uh the scrum uh has been a bit of a problem for us but we've been working really hard on that uh with uh, obviously the packs for each of the teams is different so australia for example had a very heavy pack uh whereas portugal is more light and uh, speed focused um yeah we've worked on set piece um we uh, we've looked at uh, the different things we can use against different teams so maybe going about each team individually and the main thing is just to do the basic swell so that would be a tight scrum a good hit uh, and that's what we're aiming for uh, these next few matches and i think we'll accomplish that yeah, the team i saw the game against australia and as you said in comparison with portugal and wales i think the end result doesn't illustrate well what happened in that second half because you deserved at least two more tries. I think that was what you're taking on. Um, when Georgia plays with a ball at hand, it's beautiful because people don't normally focus on Portugal with uh, in the width, but uh, Georgia is a team like that uh, also. So are we going to see more of that in the next couple of games? Yes, usually um, with uh, with Georgia, when we get together and play more and more games together, we develop pretty quickly. That's what we saw in the uh, like 2020 Autumn Nations Cup. We started off a bit slow against England, but then as the games went on, we analyzed and we learned and things got improved a lot. Um, so I think it's going to be similar now. Uh, we want to play with more ball in hand and we're trying to do that as much as possible just to maintain the ball and uh, play um, with a bit of like a bit, bit more calmness, not throwing the ball away on 50 50s and that kind of stuff. I think that's where our strengths lie. If we maintain the ball, if we hit, if we're physical, then we can really uh, cause uh, any problem, like many problems for any team, I think. Uh, this past week, you got uh, got one one week rest, but it isn't rest because you had, were hard at training. So, without yeah. revealing any secrets or what you were doing, how was the post uh, Australia game? So, what do you did in training? Um, so, to the people at home, understand how a team in a World Cup works after this so hard uh, so hard match because the physicality is off over the roof in 2023 yes uh so uh, the week actually was not different from any sort of other um game week uh 
So, for example, uh, we'll start with a lighter day after the game because obviously the players have bruises and uh, some niggles. So they'll be uh, they'll be like going through tactics, going through roles a uh, lighter day, and then we'll just increase the intensity day by day. So mm-hmm. let's say if we start on Tuesday, Wednesday will be a harder day where we incorporate more contact uh, and we have like a more speed focus. And on uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, that would be an even higher intensity day where everything is done at maximal speed um so it, it doesn't um uh it's not too different from uh, in a normal uh, game week to be honest okay so that's good that's good to know um i know portugal comes first but and this is the hard question if you don't want to answer answer it, there's no problem but do you think georgia has the strength and uh, the, the qualities to bring down a team like wales Oh, yeah, I, I think so. We've done it before, so I don't see why we can't do it now. And obviously, that's me saying that with all due respect, all the teams in this pool and in the World Cup in general are top-tier teams. Very hard to play against, but I think with us, um, if uh, things go well in certain aspects, uh, we can play against any team and we can win against any team. Uh, I don't think it, me or any of the staff or the players have any doubt of that. Um, you, we are always people from the T2 nations are always talking about the difference between with, between one side of the aisle and the other. But in truth, you are part of a generation they have beaten or were very close to beat um, T1 sides since the U- U20s. I remember a game in 2018 in, against South Africa that you lost by five points or yeah. six points. Mm-hmm. And then you were, went to beat Japan, which we can have considered as a T1 nowadays, and Scotland. So Georgia beca- is big in, at, at the moment in rugby. Do you think Georgia will push to become one of the strongest teams in, in European rugby in the last la- in the next five years? Um, in European rugby, one of the strongest teams, maybe. I, I'm not sure because uh, at the moment the under 20 setup is working really well. Uh, and there are a lot of good players that are coming through that. Um, uh, it'll be it's a bit difficult to look to through the future that much, but I think we can be uh, one of the good teams in Europe that can compete with any team. Uh, that doesn't matter if that team's in the Six Nations or not in the Six Nations. I think even now and hopefully in five years' time, we will be able to compete on equal footing with any team and not just in Europe. Uh, but a specific answer would be a bit difficult. <laughs> um, a lot of people brought, uh, ma- no, sorry, made expectations for Georgia to qualify for the next phase uh, because it's a team that defeated Italy and Wales uh, in the last in the last year. So do you think even with the loss against Wales that Georgia still has all the chances to get to the, the court and foul spot, which will be a first for your, for your side? Uh, even though with the loss against Australia, yes? Australia, uh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I think that, well, that, that's our goal, you know. I don't know a single rugby player that goes out in a rugby match to lose. We, we want to win. And if we win all three games, I think statistically we can go through. So that's our goal, to win as many games as possible. And, you know, we'll put out a good show. We'll play our hearts out. We'll play at 100%. Um, and when we win some games, and if we win all of them, then we'll go through. If not, then we'll just say, you know what, next time we have to be better. Uh, next time we have to be, be better. Uh, in terms of what is the World Cup have been, you think Georgia have gone a step, uh, uh, so sorry, have gone to a better level since 2022, or you think you're st- in the same? Uh, level as last year we've had a very good uh, pre-season camp and i think we all the players individually and as a team we've really developed so i would say we're in a better place than we were in we're in um 2022 it's just we need to transfer all of this 100 percent to the pitch and i think like a lot of it has transferred it's just with small details uh we're just making these small mistakes that sort of like ruins it all so if we take out those small mistakes i think we could be a real threat for everyone and i think we we are at the moment a better team than we were one year before and that that's what we want to do we want to progress year on year year on year 
uh, talking about that, we are always talking that tier tier two nations have been pushed aside by the others. Do you think it's time for for us and tier one nations to play more games uh, during uh, the year? You think it's the moment to scratch the barriers and for once start playing, having England to go to TBC, you going to France to play against uh, the the level a, or going to to the, to, South, to, to South Africa to play the box? Yeah, I think uh, that would really help with the development of the game, um, with more like tier two nations having home games, obviously, because um, I can tell you in Georgia, a lot of people would be interested if a big team like England or another tier one nation came uh, to play uh, to play us uh, like, like Scotland did. Um, yeah, I think um, with more games, I'm not sure because the rugby calendar is pretty packed. It would be really good to get more tier one games. Um, but yeah, I think that's um, a bit of a topic that requires like a lot of discussion in terms of like player welfare and the amount of games players should play in um, a year and in a season. But obviously, for us, the more games we get against Tier One nations, the better they'll be for us and our development. Uh, in the first game against Australia, you had a lot, a lot of people in the stands. How special is it for that? Most of them were rooting for Georgia. Uh, I know you play in a country that's full of, of people on the stands in France. So can you tell us how it is this experience to enjoy such rockers in the stands? Oh, yeah, it was crazy. And uh, the good thing was there are a lot of actual Georgians there as well. So you could hear a lot of like Georgian chanting and stuff like that, which was cool. And I think the neutral crowd as well was rooting for us because obviously if you're neutral, usually you would root for the underdog as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it was really exciting. Like the whole um, situation in the stadium, like the whole atmosphere was really, really good. Uh, and obviously that's um, that's one of the things like France is famous for, like the fans and the, the atmosphere they create during matches. So it was really good. Um, that... Aside from the atmosphere, I saw in, in your Facebook page you have been doing some actions with kids and so on. Um, how is it to, to, to be with the fans and talk to them and do the little things? Because kids really love to play with you like for five minutes, four minutes. So how yeah. is the experience from the player point of view? Uh, I think it's great. And I think it's great to sort of spread the sport more, develop the sport. And it's always good to have, um, like to hear how, uh, what fans are thinking uh, to play with the kids because it's really exciting. And I think um, it, it's really exciting for them. And I think that's why it's really exciting for us. It's fun. Um, and yeah, it's always good to hear like a fan's point of view on something, of a fan's perspective. And it's especially in France and like everywhere where uh, rugby is really developed, like they have uh, this really good enthusiasm about this like rugby in general like they're really enthusiastic they're very optimistic positive and i think as a player that really helps you because you think oh well i'm doing something really important because it can affect other people as well that have nothing to do with it they just come and watch and they're still affected mm -hmm. this positively so it's really cool in that regard it, it, it talking about kids how do you start playing rugby is there any st a story behind it do you see in tv did you have any parents that played it no, my parents didn't play. It's just my um, my dad. Uh, so we had a family friend who played rugby. Um, he was a big time rugby player in Georgia, and my my dad just wanted me to start playing, and that's how it started. There wasn't this like big story. There are some boys who say like, "Oh, I watched a rugby game on TV, and after I saw, I really wanted to like play for the Lelos and that kind of stuff." But with me, it was very like. Uh, my dad was like, oh, do you want to play rugby? And I was like, yeah, why not? And that's how it started. <laughs> was it instant love with rugby or you, you took your time with it? I think with me, I took my time with it because, um, yeah, it just uh, obviously at that time, it was more of a decision of whether I wanted to study or whether I wanted to play rugby and stuff. But towards the end, rugby still won out because um, it was really fun and I enjoyed it and I made a lot of friends along the way. And once I saw that I had the potential to play professionally, then from then on, yeah, rugby was like a very big priority for me. We are always talking about the professional side of the things. How hard is it? Because some people think it's easy because you have a good life and so on, but it's not, it's not that type of tale. So how hard is it to be a professional player? What sacrifice do you have to do? 
to be at the best level every day. Yeah, no, it's it is hard. Like a lot of people don't realize it, and uh, I think that's like that side of it is what differentiates people who want to play, but then they don't continue. Like for example, when I was playing at university, we had a lot of talented guys who could play really good rugby, but that was the difference. They just didn't want to live that professional life. You have to sacrifice a lot. That that would be um, so maintaining a diet so you can't eat anything you want. Um, you can't go out all the time with your friends. Sometimes your friends will go out and you're like, well, I can't. Uh, obviously, the training. Training is really intense. Um, injuries. Obviously, like the preseason we've had now, that must have been <laughs> the hardest experience in my life personally. Um, and it's not just having to give up something. It's that you have to do something that's really difficult. But that's the challenge of it. And that's, I think, why people enjoy the professional side as well, because it's a challenge. And if you complete a challenge, then it's good you know you've done something good for yourself uh, i know you're playing for the ver so it's not ever good to say what you want to do next but what would you be your biggest dream uh, ever go to play in the top 14 for for example yes and uh whether that would be with never um but if if it is with never and the team does have the potential and the drive to go up uh, then that'll be amazing uh but if not yeah uh that that would be the dream to to play in like a top tier competition that would either be the top 14 or the premiership or any other tier one championship and so just when the hard questions so we go to the flash ones uh -huh. um what would you be be your dream for georgian rugby in the next 10 years if uh, you can share it with us yeah in the next 10 years i think it Uh, it would be great if the sport became more popular in Georgia and a lot more kids joined because mm -hmm. I think it's like a good thing for kids to do sport in general. And obviously, if we're talking about results, um, I want Georgia to be in, in the Six Nations. Uh, I think in the next 10 years, we'll have enough potential to prove that we deserve to be there. That's one. And obviously, if we can't get it now, within the next 10 years, I want Georgia <laughs> to qualify from their group in the World Cup and if we do qualify then then we'll see from there <laughs> that's good so we move on to the flash question i can le leave you to be to your dinner and with your, your colleagues so first one i did this with becca with thomas appleton with a lot of guys yeah. you if you could eat now a dish from georgia what would it be uh so hachapuri but it would be like an acharuli hachapuri which is a different type of hachapuri Can you explain this, what is hachapuri? Yeah, so hachapuri is like a pastry dish with a lot of cheese in it, but the acharuli oh. one is different. It's like um, it's like a bit of a boat and it has cheese like inside oh. of it and the an neck. Like it's really delicious when you eat it. People, oh. do. whoever's watching it, should Google it now. It's it's really nice. In the locker room, there's always a guy that puts the worst music possible and the guy who puts the best. In the in the in the Lelos camp. Who are the the guys who do that do this? Uh, sure. For the worst music, I know. I think most of the guys um, have really good taste in music. Sometimes maybe there are a few like one or two rogue songs, like Georgi Sutskiridze might put on something something rogue. But usually, usually, um, yeah, it's really good. And with the best music. Um, we have like a playlist where everyone can like add a song so it's kind of like a joint if, if we're talking about good oh. music like a joint effort so i'm gonna say like the whole team the whole team that's cool yeah um a lot of people this went viral when the was posted the pictures uh from the german players uh who has the best facial hair for you in the team is it chalva is it to do is nina Shvili? who has the best facial hair I'm not a really big fan of mustaches, to be honest. <laughs> um, oh, who has the best facial hair? Yeah, like probably either one of the hookers, like Shawa, or maybe one of the props. Uh, Papiza has a pretty big, he had a pretty big mustache. Oh, no, mustache, sorry, a big beard. Uh, yeah, I, I'd probably go for like a big beard or something like that. Um, who's the guy that you wouldn't like to tackle in the training? Hmm. Probably Nixon, Nixon Abuladze, Nika. He's Ooh. a big unit, yeah. 
Yeah. If you, if I have to tackle him, I'll tackle him. But yeah, it would it wouldn't be nice. Favorite game that you played in your career? Uh, it would be probably Georgia Ireland. I really enjoyed that game. Or or it's a really big toss up between Georgia Ireland and Georgia Wales. I um in, oh no, Italy as well. No, I was <laughs> Italy. It, it, Italy would be the best, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one pretty much. But yeah, there's uh, Georgia Wales and Georgia Ireland come close. Um, this is a very weird question, but the funniest, funniest thing that you ever heard inside of the pitch, if you, if there's, a, if there's an answer for it. I don't. To be honest, I don't really listen to people on the pitch. I do. Oh no, I, I just try to focus on the rugby. I don't really care what people say. I don't even listen. Sometimes I am like that. Someone might tell me something, and I'll be like, "Oh, what?" So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't remember. You were not a player to score that many tries for the national team. I think you still didn't score. Uh, but if you could, against what team would you love to score a try? Uh, maybe one of the teams coming up now. That oh, okay, good. okay, good answer. Against Portugal, then. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll see. Maybe. If, if not Portugal, depends on how the team is rotated, then either Fiji or Wales. Okay, last question before the message. Would you prefer to do a Bronco or to do uh, 10, times, uh, free, uh, 10 times around the field running? Uh, at what pace? Um, okay, you have to do it under, like we was going to say, 10 minutes. To 10 minutes, 10 times. Now, I'm, I'm usually good at a Bronco, so I'll just oh. do a Bronco. Why not? What's your time in Bronco, if you know it? My best time was uh, four minutes fifty nine seconds. Oh, that's that's incredible. Okay, so before the match, I want to do a question. Uh, how important was the the Rugby Europe Super Cup for your career? Yeah, it was really important. I think it was a new thing at the time, and that's always good when something's fresh, like it's more interesting. And the teams that came out there, uh, surprisingly, were all were pretty good and skillful professional teams. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good experience, and it's good to represent your country uh, at national level and club level as well. It was something new and, I think, novel, so I think that was the best part about it. Okay, so to finish uh, this interview, can you leave a, a message in English for the broader fans and also a message in, in Georgian so the people at home feel more uh, happy with it? Uh, for the broader fans, uh, I think like we haven't shown 100% yet with these games and hopefully in the next games uh, we will show what Georgian rugby is, is capable of. And for the fans back home, Uh, so, okay. Thank you, Lasha, for coming to the show. Right. Thank, Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a pleasure. Okay, good luck for the next game. And I hope that Georgia can qualify from the Pool C because it will be big for every one of us. Okay, so thank you very much. Have a bye. Good, good evening. Goodbye. See you in the side. There you go. It's done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank bye. you very much for the interview.